Commentaries on the Heart of Father Anthony Agnes. Today is Saturday in the 17th week of ordinary time. First reading, Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 11 to 16 and verse 24. God's reading, Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Friends, today's God's reading, Matthew presents us the story of how John the Baptist died. The beheading of John the Baptist, we call it. Friends, he uses a technique that today we call a flashback. You know, flashback. Where, you know, in flashbacks, either in a book or in a movie, we get to a point in a story and the author, the producer, um, takes us back to something in the past uh, that would help us understand uh, which point in the story we have arrived. It's called a flashback. And so today, Matthew begins by telling us that Herod um, heard about Jesus and his fame. And he had yearned to see Jesus to meet him. And he tells us why when Herod heard of Jesus, he was worried. Why was Herod worried? Then he takes us back to the story of John the Baptist and how he died. Friends, that is interesting for us Christians because all of us Christians, indeed, our life finds meaning only in the life of Jesus. Yes, you see, the story today is about Jesus. But then through that, we go into the life of John the Baptist. To so begin by hearing John, Jesus come in, and then John, in the end, if you look at the last line in the gospel reading, it comes back to Jesus. It comes back to Jesus. Friends, without Jesus, our life has no meaning. You see, we Christians, we don't write our own autobiographies. An autobiography is something, the lifestyle of somebody uh, written by himself or by herself. When somebody writes his own life story, her own life story, it's called autobiography. But we Christians, we don't write autobiographies. We have biographies about Jesus. It is the life of Jesus that is our biography. You know, in the years before Vatican II, when priests were celebrating masses, usually they would face the altar, but then this altar was towards the crucifix on the wall. As you know, the priest be facing the crucifix, which was on the wall with the people. As we say, the people were watching him from behind. But the beauty of that is that, in that, when the priest was watching or looking at the crucifix, he was actually seeing his own biography. Yes. Seeing Jesus on the cross, the priest was daily, when he say Mass, he's reading his own biography in the cross of Jesus. And that's why today, uh, Benedict XVI, Pope Benedict, uh, tells us priests that when we are celebrating Mass, you put before us on the altar a crucifix to remind us of our biographies, friends. The biography of the Christian is in the life of Jesus. Yes. And so we find John the Baptist's biography in Jesus, friends. It's interesting that this man called Herod, you know, takes his brother's wife and John tells him, please, this is not correct. It is not lawful, he said. It's not right to have your brother's wife. But we are not like Herod. Are you not having things, keeping things that are, not, that are not correct for us, that are not legal for us? Now we say it is not right to have this, but we are keeping it. He was keeping somebody's wife. It wasn't right. How many times do we keep anger inside us? Is it right to keep anger? The jealousy inside our hearts? Is it right to keep jealousy? Envy, name them, you know them, fellow sinners. Like Herod, you're all keeping things we know they are not right, it is not right. And yet, we keep it to ourselves last, add to it, at last. You know, we are keeping these things which we know they are not right to have them. So, <laughs> but like Herod, we are having them in a way. And that is why Herod, to shut everything, he decided to imprison John the Baptist. He was afraid of his fears. John was his fear, so he tried to imprison him. 
And we do likewise, friends. We try to push away our fears, you know. But we know that when we go for confession, we go for mass, we know that when we stand before the blessed sacrament, you know, we take the Bible, it reminds us of our fears. So what do we do? We put away these things. I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not going for confession. I'm not going for communion. You see, I'm not being read my Bible. Why? Because when you see this thing, your fears come alive, like Herod, you know. So he pushed away John in prison. That was his fear. Friends, today we are being reminded to look for our fears. What is your fear? What keeps you afraid from coming closer to God? When you come before God, what makes you ashamed? These are the fears that God wants us to bring before him, not to imprison them, hide them, push them away like Herod did. It's a mistake, friend, when you decide to push away these fears. No, open them, open, open the prisons. See, all her prisons in our heart. Open the prison of your heart. Let out these fears. Stand before God. Jesus takes care of our fears, friends. And so, <laughs> the story is our story. Now, friends, we hear Herod, who did something that we should never think of doing. You know, we hear that it was his birthday. So let's be careful when we are happy. Your happiest moment could be your weakest moment. Yes, it's good to celebrate. But whenever you are celebrating, I mean, you are joyful, occasion for joy, please constantly remind yourself that, look, there's the possibility that that happiest moment of your life could be your weakest at least spiritually, morally, yes. When you have celebrations, let's be aware that we don't let these celebrations which are from God. Birthday is a day to say thank you to God. But for Herod, that became a day to sin, to say no to God. May the occasions of blessing that God brings into your life not become occasion to say God forbid me with you, to say God away with you. Occasion to sin, I should say. Friends, this is a temptation you all go through. Let us be conscious of this sin of Herod that keeps coming and going. And so Herod tells this girl, we are told, whatever you want. And she goes to her mother and then she gets what she wants. The Herod John the Baptist. Let's be careful of this advice. You see, I don't know when somebody comes to you telling you, look, I'm going out with somebody's husband. I'm going out with somebody's wife or somebody's whatever. What do you say? What is your advice? Friends, you have to be men and women of moral courage. Yes. When we give wrong advice to people, we lead people on to sin, to do wrong things, we are equally culpable, they say. Equally culpable. We pray against this that when we hear, we see the young ones, our friends coming to us for advice, we will not repeat what Herodias did by giving them, encouraging them to sin, to do wrong things. Today we are talking more about moral issues, you see. Once a while we have to talk about moral issues. Don't let us encourage people in the wrong. We have to say, no, this is wrong. You can't take somebody's wife. You can't be with somebody's husband. You are a married woman. You are a married man. It's wrong. It's not correct. Just we have to let it be. Friends, it's a challenge, but then that is a reality. And so we have this temptation coming and going. Sometimes we become Herodias, we encourage others to sin. And sometimes, like this young girl, we take people's advice and we go around, around doing things which we know are wrong. But to also please people, we do them. And then we have Herod, who, when he knows truly that this thing is wrong he says okay for the sake of my image the people around me go and kill the man john the baptist he lacked moral courage and do we not see it every day friends in church bishops priests church presidents society leaders who lack moral moral courage knowing that this is wrong but they're not able to say it because of their position don't protect because of what they are getting from some people, they are quiet. It is the Herod disease. It is the Herod disease. We have to fight against every day of our lives. What is wrong is wrong, friends. And then outside church, we see it in politics. Presidents of countries, nations, MPs, you know, members of parliament, leaders in society, who because of political affiliations, political power, 
can tell that this is wrong, this is wrong. They may be Catholics, but out there they don't want to say it. This is against your Catholic faith. Say it. Don't be a herald. For the sake of your political party, your political position, for the sake of your personal gains, you go keep quiet and say, go ahead. Allow abortion, for example. Allow abortion. I am against, but allow it. Friends, you know that, so I don't want to go into detail. You all know that very well. It's a challenge, friends. We can't be heralds. We can't be heralds. Whether in church or outside church, it's a challenge because you all play the role of heralds in this story. It's a disease, friends. It's a sickness. We pray that we shall have the courage and the grace of God, as you say, because without God, we cannot do anything to come out of these challenges and temptations that come to us, whether we are in the church as priests, religious, or outside church, as societal leaders, political leaders, office holders, as you say. Friends, in the end, John is killed and the disciples come to take his body and bury it. They bury it. We shall know that this is the same of Jesus because in the end, when Jesus died on the cross, his own disciples also came to take away his body and buried it. Yes. So in John, we see, we see Jesus. But the truth is that in Jesus, we see John. And so they go to tell Jesus about the story of John the Baptist. You see, he began the gospel by saying that Herod heard about Jesus. And then we come into John's story. And at the end of the story, we hear that his disciples go back to Jesus. It's always like that, friends. It's start with Jesus. We enter through Jesus. In the end, we come back to Jesus. In the college, in the liturgy, we say the, the liturgy is the source and summit. You know, beginning and end. The liturgy is the source and summit. We start from the liturgy, Jesus, God. Then we come to ourselves, our own life stories, the challenge, challenges we are going through. But in the end, we go back to the liturgy, Jesus. Always is Jesus. He's the beginning. He's the end. Just as you see in today's gospel reading. We pray for our friends. And that we should always see our lives. Only, only, only in the life of Jesus. Remember, Christians, we don't write autobiographies. We already have biographies written by Jesus in his life story. It is our life. We live for him and him alone. Let us pray. God our Father, give us the grace. Because sometimes it's very difficult as Christians to live lives as you lived. But we know it's possible because your grace is always with us. Pray for all of us, Lord, to avoid the temptations of being heralds, Herodias, Father, but sometimes to be John the Baptist to allow the truth to stay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.